aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys, and welcome to our week three VPL Wi Fi battle. And this time, we're going to get up against Carl Oscar in our last game for this tourney. Uh, if you guys have been following me around, you know that we have a three games set here for the VPL, which is a league that I created uh, a few months back. We're actually going in for our second season, and we decided to have a bit of a tourney before the season stuff, where the people, the four best people in this tourney uh, that win the most games will be able to actually draft first. So we're basically drafting for position, which was kind of a nice concept, but definitely keeping the things that are going around. So we drafted six Pokemon. Uh, against one another, and clearly those six Pokemon is that we're gonna bring to Wi-Fi Battle. So it basically is a league of a counter team at the moment, and um, I won my first game and lost my second game, though I did win or lose with little, but I was basically top three after that because it had I had a positive differential at that point, and Carl Oscar here was actually a minus differential, but won big against the person that was second, and basically ensure that the person that was first was definitely going to be first, but the guy who was second would actually have tie versus me due to he actually losing himself, which was very grateful because this means that I need to beat Carl, and Carl clearly needs to beat me, which only makes this, of course, that much more exciting. So at this time, both me, uh, Carl Oscar, and Bogat was in second place with one win and one loss at plus one in differential. So it got kind of exciting here because I knew I needed to beat Carl Oscar win win against him big, uh, and it was kind of tough to consider, of course, that his matchup here is Tapu Koko, Mega Alakazam, Scizor, Psygod, Golisopod, and Credili. While Credili is not the biggest threat for me, Golisopod actually put a lot of pressure on me, mainly because my, I have a Mega Sharpedo, and that Pokemon being able to be Oko'd by a first impression, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of bad. <laughs> I won't really deny that. So the team that I'm bringing here, because I, since I need to win big, as stated, I realized that I have to have a defined sweeper for this matchup and hope that works. Because if this isn't working, then I'm going to lose. And if I lose, I'm not hopefully going to lose that big. And it doesn't matter if I lose, I pretty much have to win big, which is my main focus. So I'm bringing, of course, uh, Autonomized Zelestila, uh, Sharpedo, Adamant version, Speed Booster, Speed, of course, the um, Tabu Koko has plus one. Uh, fighting scene um, Raikou with Aura Sphere and uh, basically that pummel attack to be able to do it, Kyo Cradley. Um, Scarfed God of War, Assault with Dreep beyond to be able to lock down, of course, the Mega Like a Sam. And Yasha Berry, special defensive fat ass Garchomp. Basically, uh, my hopes here was we was going to lead up with Cyber Coco. And I was able to force him to go for a Hidden Power Ice or Dazzling Gleam to try to kill me as I KO him in return. So that's my initial thought, that's how do I want the game to transpire, and I want him to lose, of course, in Melga Sam early, because if he does that, then Celestia could feast. So, hopefully that happens. So, anyway, with all this said, let's see how this game went. So, from the get-go here, I clearly, as I stated, I'm gonna lead off with a sexist Magachamp. He does start off with Power Surge, which is the Tabu Koku. And I went for a quick, as stated, I really, really was trying to bait him here. He could have gone for U-turn here, but he actually goes for Dazzling Gleam, and that will not do, or it will do a lot of damage. But the thing is here, I know I can take it, I and mean, my retaliation should be more than enough to kill this Tabu Koku. So turn one, Tabu Koku goes down, which is a massive check, or pretty much a counter for my Celestila, because Celestila can't deal with this whatsoever, even if it does outspeed it. Because I can't KO it unless I'm uh, plus two. So it's gonna bring his Mega Alakazam here, which was great because Breakpion is the number one switch in here. Focus Blast is not a two hit KO. So I'm gonna switch in Beltasar. Really, really was hoping he didn't go for Focus Blast. Which, luckily, I should say, as he, of course, Mega Evolve, is that he actually gonna have Substitute. So the set here is really, really nice, clearly, because that Substitute really makes it harder for me to. Uh, in another kind of environment to be able to deal with Megalixam properly because it's very hard to switch into. As the substitute goes to transpire, I do of course go directly for this turn for of course knockoff. Uh, and it does decide to go for Dazzling Gleam and that of course will not do a whole lot on me. Also, sorry about the kind of freezing going on here. I kind of think the recording kind of gave up on me at some point, so it really looks like that. 
So anyway, his substitute will fade. I do pack the pursuit, and while pursuit is not a clear KO, if it does switch it, switch out, which it does, then yeah, it's gonna go down. And of course, that is Mega like a Zam by the way. So we really, really, really start strong, and I really mean strong here, as he's gonna send his Supercell, which is a Zygod, and I'm just gonna actually give up on my Drapion here, because the thing is here, if it's a Bandit version, then this is gonna KO anyway, if it's a Scarf version, he will not be able to do it KO my Zelestila. so with that in mind, I'm actually gonna switch in directly to my Zelestila. Hoping that it's a bandit set because if it's bandit, then he's gonna pop my citrus and I should be able to sweep actually. So I gotta set in Velm away. Of course, I say to the Celestila as uh, he actually will switch out. Which at first it felt kind of weird as he's switching badass, being of course with Lights of Pod. But I do kind of get what he was going for. He definitely was expecting me to go directly for a heavy slam and KO, of course, the. Uh, the star got there, but me getting the speed up basically meant that I now can go for uh, my attack phase. As uh, so he's actually gonna bring in Devour B and of course the Cradily, but due to Heavy Slam, it will be more than enough to KO this Pokemon. Uh, Acrobatics clearly, with, a, with of course Citrus, Citrus not pop, will definitely not do a whole lot of damage. And without the attack boost, of course the Beast Boost, I will definitely not do more massive damage than of course Heavy Slam can provide. And I actually got to learn here that autonomizers do not have your weight, it just makes you 100 I IBS lower. Which basically means that Celestia still is the heaviest Pokemon around, even with that in mind. So, autonomizers do not make it that much lighter. So, it's gonna send him badass here, and I just can go for acrobatics. As you guys will see, Golizapod is such a freaking bulky house. Uh, as my opponent, of course, Carl goes for liquidation. Which, to be fair, it does a lot of damage, but it's not anything I didn't expect it to. As it's gonna follow that up by Aqua Jet, and that's actually gonna pop my Citrus. And the reason that's so good is because that means that Goliathopod will not be able to come in and out of MO one more time, because now I do the double damage and I needed to do the double damage. So Acrobatics basically kills the badass, and yeah, Goliathopod is gone. So his last two Pokemon is, of course, the. Scissor, I do believe, and the Zygars. I was basically thinking, you know, if it is Bandit, he won't be speed. If it's Scarfed, he won't be able to kill me. I got this in the bag. There is no way he's gonna be able to turn this one around, as I do actually outspeed him. Firmly indication that he actually is a, a more bad and oriented one. So, luckily, Celestia just gonna pop the Zygod, and his last Pokemon is, as stated, the Scissor. And I do pack Flamethrower, and Flamethrower is pretty much a guaranteed KO. If he's running special defensive version, then he's gonna be able to survive, but then again, what can, of course, this Pokemon do to, of course, my monstrous, monstrous Zelestula. So, GT Carl, and yeah, I'm going to be completely honest here, because Carl really felt bad, of course, when the spell was over, that I was playing badly. I don't think you did that whatsoever, and... It this was basically I needed to play a certain way and I was hoping you was going to respond to my team in a certain way. So a quick review of course what was going on here because I definitely see how this looks like a complete um, sweep basically turn one and you know definitely was overplaying Carl Oscar. But the thing is here that one really has to take into consideration. I know exactly which six Pokemon I was facing. And I wanted to create a kind of environment where I could win easily. Uh, I was looking for a series of play that I know Carl could be playing, or more likely how he's forced to play versus my team. Tapu Koko was definitely one of those things I felt could ruin that kind of thought process, but he losing it that early in the game really helped me out. And then of course Alakazam was fully checked by Drapion, and once those two were gone, well necessarily nothing stopping Celestila. And that was basically what I was trying to to gain really, really early. And Carlos had clearly served, of course, Melka Sam very, very early against me. Then again, it's not very likely that Melka Sam could necessarily do too much to sell his slay either. But I played a game that I would call, you know, hyper, hyper offense with a very specific set of plays in mind. And that did transpire. So in the end, I would say that I'm kind of lucky. Even if I predict the series of plays, Carl is the one that has to execute it. And. Uh, he playing in that way only kind of serves how good he really is because in a in a longer and more stamina wise 
Wi-Fi battle would have probably been played more safely, this would definitely work against me, and I know that. And the only way this would work in so well is only work because I was specifically looking for a series of plays like this, and um, I had the, the Pokemon to pull this off, and I needed a big win to be able to actually go to become one of these four winners, which actually become with this big win because it's a 5-0, and of course. Boga to play lately didn't did win his game but not as big so yeah I am second hey <laughs> so I'm really glad and of course this VPL is going to of course transpire uh, starting actually in Mosh so I will keep you guys posted about that and how that will look like but I really want to thank Carl for this Viper Battle I want to thank everybody else who've been of course been a part of this tournament to of course been a part of this and actually uh, having these series of battles it's been great talking with you guys and let's see if the league is as as fun as this was because I had a blast here so if anybody of course you guys have been watching thank you for doing your show don't forget to leave a like of course as always and I'll see you in the next video until then of course take care